What's going on guys? It's me, Mikey Pipes. It's Monday morning. It's a little before 11 o'clock and it's raining. It's raining cats and dogs. On my way to a service call, a Bedaris water heater not working. No bueno. So one of the first things we're going to do when we pull up to the house, we're going to respect the customers, the clients, property and time. And we're gonna do that by, when we pull up to the house, we are gonna be at that front door no later than 60 seconds later. Watch All this. All right, just pulled up in front of the house, put everything in the park, turn off the truck, let's head to the front door. Now it's raining, so I'm gonna move with a purpose anyway. Whew. We're gonna grab the mat. Right? I'm gonna roll out the mat. Hi, puppy. Okay, see, we're friends. We're friends. Tails wagon. You know, you know the dog man. You must have a dog. You know. I have two dogs. Yeah. We say that too. We go, this is mommy's friend. Daddy's friend. <laughs> okay, you want to have fun. Come on. All right, lead the way. You have no hot water? No hot water for three days already. Oh, what's been done so far? What hasn't been done? Well, a guy came. Who's the guy? Some guy? We have this contract with something called Home, Home Serve. Yes. And they don't handle this kind of They don't do this kind of So stuff. we just canceled the whole contract. Okay. And so then I called... Uh, Bosch. Yeah, Bosch. And Bosch they Madera. sent you. So now you know you're, what you're... This Generally. Is your, <laughs> so, so you have no hot water. It's been going on for three days, and that's it. Yeah, my husband tried to do YouTube, couldn't figure it out. How old is the system? I'm not sure. It was last time it was serviced or maintained. Well, this Fiscaldi gentleman, yes. who is our regular plumber, okay. was probably here within the year. Okay. Servicing it. Okay. So, like routine annual maintenance? Yeah, but my husband is feeling like it goes out a lot. Okay. Okay. Let me take a peek. I we'll don't see what's know what going that on. really means. So you have an indirect water heater, and you have the boiler that hangs on the wall, and... How old is it look to you? Probably ten years. Yeah. Well, it can't. It can't be. Uh, it definitely was post Andy. Agreed. So it's, it's off the floor. We had. Uh, <laughs> it's off the floor. Most boilers yeah, were put we off had, the floor after, after then. After. Yeah, we had. We got flooded, so we had to go down to the studs, and then that was replaced. So maybe it was twenty thirteen or so. Let's see what. Let's see if it resets. My name is Liz. You can just call me. Okay, Liz. Thank All you. All right, so let's rewind. CO is lack of communication from pressure sensor or not enough pressure. So underneath the unit, we have a triticator gauge, and we are reading 15 PSI. Let's pop open the relief valve and confirm it's actually reading something. Yep. And... We have a Tapo. We gave it some more pressure. So now we're at 20 PSI. Still reading CO. Let's reset that again. We might have a we might have a bad pressure sensor. So let's take the cover off. Alright, there is the pressure sensor, which is leaking water right there huh kind of looks like the uh water pressure sensors on the uh south korean machines okay that's the water pressure sensor let's do a hard power reset cycle power's off okay the dripping 
is more than likely because the system is cold. All right, it hasn't been fired in a while. It's cold. So let's see if we plug that back in. All right, let's turn the power back on. I could be optimistic. Nope, lack of communication. All right, so I took the pressure sensor out. I closed the primary loop valves on this return on supply side. And look at that. Here, filled with cocky. All right, there hasn't been good maintenance here in a while. And they really need a, uh, a, ma a magnet on the return side. Wow, pretty bad actually. And all this black piping here and the hydraulic manifold, the separator right there. Oh boy, no, see if I can rinse this out. All right, I got the real glass thing on my mouth, and uh, let me show you what I used so far. I think I got it as clean as I can make it. I'm gonna put that back in there and see what happens. But obviously, we need a new water pressure sensor. All right, for shits and giggles, let me show you what I did. And that water pressure sensor, no bueno. But this one looks familiar, right? It gives me a pressure equal zero. So, we know there's something wrong with that pressure sensor. We need a Badaris pressure sensor. All right, a little bit of plumber's grease on that O-ring right in there. The old one broke off. Let's see if she slides in. Okay. And you push in the O-ring. Goes all the way in. Okay. Plugged in. Let's open up the valves first. Okay. Check the leaks. Okay. I don't see anything dripping. Good. Power on. Good. 79 degrees. Just doing a little purge cycle. Then we'll get a call for domestic hot water. Okay. There's the heat exchanger. It's a little glass right there, you see? Oh, someone actually bent the little mirror in. It's a mirror. All right, it should be bent so you can see the flame. See, like that, but... There's the mirror. See that? See the flame? I just bent this back carefully, not to hit the glass. And now we can see the flame without having to go like this on the camera, you know? So, water pressure's installed, no drips, a little bit of plumber's grease to help get it in there. And the old one broke off. You see? interesting look at this certified by Pioi Dung Everon this is a workhorse all right while we're finishing up I was gonna take a visual uh, just a visual list of everything that we see with this machine and making the car customer aware of just what maintenance this Badaris needs on an annual basis not a lot, but it's due for a full disassembly, cleaning of the heat exchanger, and reassembly. You know, as you heard earlier, she's about 10 years old, so it's about that time. All right, so off camera, I advised her, listen, you know, there is a section of the manual that states, you know, have a qualified heating professional inspect your heating system on an annual basis. You know, she's kind of had that done. 
But I also made her aware there's a whole section in the manual, the, the installation and service manual on cleaning. Disassembly of the heat exchanger, reassembly, cleaning being in the middle part of that. And again, that takes hours, you know, an experienced tech could probably do it in maybe three to four hours, but made aware of that. Also some gaskets and seals that should be replaced, sensors, you know, a cleaning, descaling, all that good stuff. As you can see, the machine's been on this wall for nine years and really hasn't been much of a problem other than last uh, winter, you know, it stopped working. They, this is the summer house and of course the house froze. It is what it is. Um, but, and the Nest thermostat was connected to the daughter's uh, cell phone. So she got the notice, but she's in college and she doesn't pay attention because she's a kid and she doesn't look at notifications on her phone. <laughs> so that's that. That's the Badaris. What to do when you have a CO error code on the display and you have no hot water. CO, you have a communication failure. All right. And generally it's the water pressure sensor and it could also be the main board, but you saw how we troubleshooted that. All right, guys, hope you appreciated this educational video on what to do if your Badaris is displaying an uh, error code of CO and you have no heat or hot water. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. I really appreciate it. Smash that thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. If you like this kind of content on the channel, the more subscribers, the more motive I am to create more great and amazing content. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be well. God bless. Stay safe.